Christmas. It's Bourbon Bill, and tonight, a very, very special episode. It's Christmas Eve, December 24th, the 24th day of the Bourbon Advent Calendar. And you know what that means? Two things. Mr. Lucky Deer is here to see us off into the new year, and it's a double feature. We're doing December 24th and the 25th pour tonight, because no one's going to watch us on Christmas Day when they're opening gifts. Hopefully they're uh, opening some bourbon gifts from my last minute gifts video. If you are, you're a lucky man or woman. So we got a special uh, palette opener, warmer upper today, courtesy of the back of my parents' closet. And I mean the way, way back. And it's international. Whoa. Look at this bad boy. This is Canadian rich and rare. And rare it is because we have no idea how old this monster is. This is, uh, I don't know, what the, what the, what's the volume on this? My God, it doesn't even have a size on here. This, this could be like a 1.75. It's glass. Look at that. It's got a handle. And here in the neck, built-in pourer. What a gift from the past. So uh, this is probably going to be absolutely horrible, but we might as well start. It's got the intact tax strip here, but oddly enough, no year. Let's crack into this bad. It's probably a twist. Maybe not. I can't even get it. I'm going to have to cut that a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but this is... <laughs> Holy smokes! Canadians didn't want this coming out. And it is, in fact, a plastic cap, hardened with age. Best guess on this old rich and rare here is that A, it's not going to taste rich and it's not going to taste rare. And it's probably from the 70s. Wow, she pours easy and light. You know what? It doesn't even tell you the proof on this bad boy. I'm going to guess like 80. All right, are we ready for a... Look how it's like... It literally is like a well-hydrated person's urine. That's the color here. Very light. Very light. Hints of corn, youth, hay, grass. Rubbing alcohol. Does not smell promising. Let's take a sip. <laughs> God, that's terrible. Well, rest assured, probably... Any of our samples will be better today, and they've all been excellent so far. That's going to be a massive drain pour. That'll clean out the pipes. My antlers on for maximum effectiveness. And our first, and our first sample of the day, definitely darker than our uh, northern Canadian friends there. That was in fact not rich or rare, and tasted like Canadian dirt. Let's give this one a nosing. Smells sweet like cherry Luden's cough drops. And like we've been calling all Advent Calendar, I'm going to go Buffalo Trace. I almost feel like I can't be wrong on this. This is definitely from Buffalo Trace, and we haven't even smelled it a third time or tasted it yet. There's some oak in there. Just tons of cherry. Tons of cherry caramels. It's the Buffalo Trace profile. Let's take a sip. Nice and light and proof, and definitely a Buffalo Trace product. Just that, that cherry sweet profile on it. So if you're just joining us at the very last moment, go here and watch the other videos. Make sure you hit subscribe. But we're going over category, finish yes or no, proof price bottle and distillery. All right, category for this is bourbon, finish no. Proof, I don't know. This could be like 90, because it doesn't drink very hot, or it could be like 93, could be like a Blanton's. Um, we'll, we'll probably go that it's, that it's a Blanton's, I think. We'll say proof is 93, price, uh, Blanton's is $59.99 in the great state of PA, so we're going to go $60 on this. Bottle, I believe, is Blanton's, and distillery is Buffalo Trace. Gosh, it does smell good. I'm getting more oak now that's been sitting in the glass a little bit here. But it's still definitely a Buffalo Trace product. I just think it's hotter than 90, but 
93 and Blanton's is 93. It's probably what it is. I seem to like it a little bit more than Blanton's, oddly enough. But all Blanton's are single barrels. Rita, who sent this in? James. James Street, thank you, sir, for the delicious Buffalo Trace pour. Well, from that distillery. And Rita, what were you drinking? Because I, I went all in on that guess. So what were you drinking? John J. Oh. Single Barrel. Oh, we were so close. Damn it. Maybe it well, Buffalo Trace. Technically. Technically it is Buffalo Trace Distillate. So I'm going to give myself that point. So category it was bourbon. It was not finished. Proof is 100 though. It didn't drink 100. It's 100. Yeah, did not drink a hundred on that. Uh, price, those were like fifty a bottle, so we're close enough on price. Bottle was actually John J. Bowman single barrel from the Bowman Distillery. However, they're using Buffalo Trace distillate, so uh, that counts as a win. Another win here. Now, oddly enough, I have a bottle of John J. Bowman, and I here's my bottle. Clearly, it's still sealed, but uh, Curtis is also courtesy of James, so we got the sample and the bottle, but it clearly wasn't from this bottle. And this bottle here, John J. Bowman is also a single barrel. So we'll see if I should have recognized that because I do love John J. Bowman. Woo, good cork pop on that. Let's get a glass here. All right. Let's see if uh, he was trying to trick me here now. Oh, this smells a lot different. I know this is a fresh pour, but this is far oakier and a lot less cherry cough syrup than uh, the sample of John J. Bowman that he sent. Oh yeah, this this bottle's got far more vanilla oak on it. I think this bottle's better. James, you you uh, you kept the worst bottle for yourself, buddy. <laughs> All right. Thank you, James, for that one. All right. Now we're on to our second sample of the evening. We're back with our second sample of the day, and I'll tell you what, it's a tad bit darker. Just how we like it on Bourbon Bill. Let's give it a nosing. Oh! Oh, that's what Pop was talking about. It's all red fruits galore tonight on this bad boy. A lot of deep caramel. It's like red fruits, but like almost like like a pie filling, that like candied red fruit. Very sweet. A little bit of proof heat singeing the nostrils here on this bad boy. Mm. This smells expensive, I will say. Let's take a sip. Oh, heaven help me, that was good. Oh, not particularly high proof though. I think this one's about 100. Either that or my proof is like way off tonight. I don't know. Clearly I thought 100 proof was like 90 or 93. So I was like 10 off. So if that's the case, I think this was 100. It could be like 110. Kind of smells a little bit like a good version of Willet, which to me there is no such thing. I don't like much Willet. The only Willet I've ever liked was a Hirsch like seven year single barrel, like 135 proof Willet that I got as a sample one time. Anything else Willet is nearly a drain pour for me. Just not a Willet fan. Now I've never tried any of their purple tops. Let's uh, get this one more nosing and tasting. There's like, there's like a dried plum aspect here. There's red fruits, but there's like a very dry, dark, plummy aspect going on. A good bit of oak on the palate, but not overly hot. I don't know. All right, category, I think I think it is bourbon. I say that now, but we, we've been wrong completely on that a lot of times in this advent calendar. Finish, no. Proof, I'm going to say, is like 
I want to say 100, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna hedge up to like 105 in case it's like 110. Price, I'm fairly certain this one would come in at like maybe a hundred dollars a bottle to 120. So I'll say like we'll say 115 a bottle. Bottle and distillery, I really have no clue to be honest with you. Um, I have almost zero clue here. I don't know. I was leaning towards Willet, but I just don't get that like earthiness that I get from Willet, which is why I don't like it. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with MGP as a distillery. Bottle guess, no clue to be honest. I really do enjoy this. This would be a buy for me, but I have no clue what this is. I'm gonna go with like Noah's Mill, although that's Willet, and I just said it wasn't Willet. We'll go with Noah's Mill. Rita, who sent this in? From Ken Wicker. Ken Wicker! Thank you, sir, for another delicious sample. I know we haven't gotten through all of yours, uh, but they've all been hitters that you sent in so far. Rita, what were we drinking? Old Fitzy. Old Jesus <laughs> Christ! We screwed this up horribly! <laughs> old uh, old Fitzgerald, huh? Old Fitzgerald. I'm trying to read the photo here. It's Zoom in on that. I am. It's eight years. That's all I've got. Oh, it's the eight year! Boy. fantastic so my wife Rita lost Ken's list so he sent a photo so now she's doing some you know examining of the zooming in and trying to figure out what that number was that was number five are you sure that's the correct model yes old Fitzgerald eight year son of a bitch I was well, well I was close enough category it is bourbon finished no that's correct proof is a hundred on them I said 105 but I said it could be a hundred so we're close there Price, I said it was 100 to 120. I believe that bottle was about 100. Ken, let me drop a comment on there. I, I obviously did not get this bottle, but I heard great things about it. Uh, bottle and distillery, way off. That would have been Heaven Hill and Old Fitzgerald. We did not get that. I mean, let me just, now that I know that, smells a little bit like Heaven Hill. Doesn't well, you know what? I guess maybe the little bit of uh, weirdness that I was getting on this was the wheat, but again, didn't didn't think of that until later. But that is a weeded bourbon. Wow. Okay. Well, what a way to end it, right? Um, so thank you everybody who sent in samples. I greatly appreciate it. Um, we got through most samples. I know, Ken, I know you sent some in late. So we didn't get through all of yours, but we got through most samples. Of everybody else. So I really appreciate it. Uh, and don't worry, they won't go to waste. I will be drinking them or using them in future videos. So stay tuned for that. Um, I want to thank everybody who sent them in. No one sent me garbage. That's the biggest surprise of the season was that I did not get garbage pours. I fully expected Willet Pottswill and other Scotch garbage and Young Craft two-year-old stuff that I was going to puke out into the carpet here. Did not get any of that. Everybody sent in hitters or things that I definitely wanted to try. And honestly, everything that people have sent in, I did not have. So what a fantastic advent, could not have asked for better. And I appreciate everyone who sent those in. So to, to round out the evening, let's crack a fine pour. All right, here it was a uh, Christmas gift. You've seen in the background, all advent. It's trying, it's time to try Booker's. 2022-02, the Lumberyard Batch. I believe I had a sample of this, and I'll, I'll link it above if I... Oh, wow. The wax just broke right off. It's like Knob Creek all over again. Wow, that's sticky wax. Good cork pop on that one as well. All right. Right on the neck. How is the Lumberyard Booker's? Wow. A lot, a lot more oaky than Booker's. Booker's usually pretty nutty. A lot more caramel, brown sugar. Let's take a sip. Instantly tastes like Booker's, but I gotta say that's one of the better Booker's I've had in quite a long time. A lot of oak on that. Uh, the nuts are still there, but I gotta say this is a great one. Uh, 
Thank you, William Johnson, for sending in that delicious bookers. Then last but not least, I haven't done a full review on this, but I will. And I've already cracked it. Barrel Vantage. James, thank you, sir, for this one. Quite an odd one, which we'll go into detail on the full review. But we got a blend of uh, straight bourbon finish and Mizanura French and toasted American oak from Barrel. A lot of wood on this bad boy, which is what you would expect from a three wood blend. A lot of sweet corn, a lot of oak, smells delicious. All the woods mingle very well together. Another excellent pour. Thank you, James. So thank you again to everyone who sent that in, and Merry Christmas from Bourbon Bill. We'll see you next year. Have a good evening, everybody.